guys, I'm going to show you six ways to cure depression, so stick around. about curing depression is knowing if your depression is due to a situation or a chemical imbalance okay now let me get to this situational depression means that you are depressed because of a situation in your life that currently happened whether it be breaking up with someone whether it be someone dying in your family or whether it be losing a job okay so that's a situation and that's not really called depression it's called sadness okay sadly in today's society people will see you sad about something that should make you sad and they'll be like oh maybe you, you need a doctor maybe you need to see a doctor okay and really you're just crying because you know you, you just found out about something it's normal it's a normal reaction but now they want to drug you nowadays and just for the slightest thing of showing emotion and that's not healthy so you gotta know when it's uh, situational and when it's chemical okay now uh, a situational sadness could become a depression if left untreated like for example if you can get over someone and it's affecting your health your mental health you're not eating you're not sleeping you're not uh, hygienic then that is a sign that yes you should be getting help but um, usually people do get over that and you know, everybody has their time of getting over something in their life and it takes time. So knowing that it takes time to get over something is a path to liberating yourself from sadness, okay? And avoiding that depression, okay? Depression will come in a loop when you can't get out of it, okay? So just be aware that you are sad and you have the rights to be sad, but give yourself some time to say, okay, if I'm not recuperated by this certain amount of time, then maybe I should seek help, okay? Now, a chemical imbalance could be due to many, many things. And, and we're still number one, okay? It's finding out what it is that's causing the depression. A chemical imbalance could be um, due to lack of vitamin D3, which is, which is due to lack of sun exposure. You need at least 20 minutes a day to have your full vitamin D intake. Now, vitamin D3 is already being classified as a hormone. Okay, like you can't just function without the sun. Okay, you just can't eat a healthy meal and then not get sun. Okay, you will die. Okay, so you really need that vitamin D3. And a lot of people are depressed nowadays because they're just on the computer, on their phones inside, you know, building, working, and they don't get any sun or their city doesn't get any, you know, doesn't get any sun exposure. It's just too cloudy or over overcast. Okay, like London. Um, it's known to have a lot of chronic fatigue because people are low on vitamin D3. Now, now I've been low on vitamin D3 and I've taken uh, supplements, but there's nothing like the sun. There's nothing like just getting 20 minutes of sun as much as you can. And it really does help your mood and it also helps you balance your circadian system, okay? It helps you balance sleeping, which also could cause you to be depressed if you lose the sleep, okay? So number two is get your sun exposure, get your vitamin D3, okay? Now, number three, remove your negative music out of your playlist, okay? This goes for instrumentals too, okay? Or any, or any melancholic melody that you would be listening to, okay? At first, when I tried this technique, I thought that it was just that I was listening to, you know, um, negative words, okay? Like, first, I thought it was mainstream music. That was the problem, okay? With the words of rap and the cursing and, you know, all the negative annotations that they put in, in the music. But then when I was playing classical music, uh, when I would be going over the same, same melody over and over again in practice, sometimes that melody was sad and I would be sad afterwards and I didn't know why and it was because of the sad melody. So if you're this type of person that you're very sensitive to things and you get influenced really quickly, I really suggest you stop listening to music for a period of time. I stopped listening to music for a whole year and it was very hard, okay? Being a musician is very hard. but. Um, I realized that I, I, I got myself balanced and how much music really does affect you, okay? Especially when you're not paying attention. Like, I started listening to music again because now I have more control over it. And uh, I have an iPod and when I play the music, okay, and I'm cleaning, 
I'm not really paying attention to the music. That's when it's it becomes dangerous. If you're playing something that's sad or has a, a, a negative lyric on it, your subconscious will pick that up and you will be uh, reenacting that during the whole day and you wouldn't even know why and you just and and the vibrations of the song start to manifest in you. So that's something that you have to really watch out for, okay? Try to stay away from the music if possible. Another thing I wanted to mention is a music can make you bipolar. This is how you become bipolar. When you listen to a very, very happy song and then you switch it to a very negative song, it's a, it's a different polarity. You do that multiple times and you watch how you're going to become manic and depressed, okay? Now, a lot of people in society are manic depressive and they don't even know. They'll be putting on some earphones all day listening to their favorite mainstream artist and a very positive song comes and they're jamming to it and then the next track is a very sad song and then the next track is a very happy song so what's going on here okay now also we have our music in 440 okay if you listen to 440 for a long period of time it's going to get annoying okay try to put your music all in 432 hertz and there's actually an app now that you could put it on your phone and you can listen to music in 42 hertz which is the earth's natural frequency now, number four, this one's easy to explain. Get a pet because it is known that people with pets live a lot longer and they, they are less prone to depression. When you get a pet, you're more focused on the pet most of the time, okay? They're trying to get your attention. And the thing is that you don't have the time to be thinking about things that make you depressed when you have a pet that's in front of you trying to get your attention. So this is something that if you're able to get a pet, this is something that I totally recommend you getting. It's a total, total game changer. Number five, get exercise, okay? And I know this is, sounds cliche, but the thing is that when you don't move around, when you don't move your body, what happens is that the energy starts to get stagnant in your body and your brain doesn't start to function as, as it used to. And what I like to do is that I like to clean and use that as an exercise. And I know a lot of people would say that's not considered exercise. And typically, I know in a way it doesn't, but at least you're moving your body. It's better than nothing. And at least you kill two birds in one shot. You're moving and you're cleaning your space, okay? That's number five, and which leads me to number six, okay? Number six leads me to feng shui, okay? When you have things organized in your house a certain way, it attracts certain energy, and it'll attract uh, a certain lifestyle, okay? When I used to be a little bit messy back then, I noticed that I wasn't functioning as, a, as optimal as I wanted to, okay? And then I started to be a little bit more organized, and I started to actually applying feng shui, and actually being a little bit more tidy and things that just that just changed everything the whole the whole energy just you know completely completely switched around and a lot of people have bad feng shui a lot of people have clothes on the floor that's been there for weeks they've had uh plates of dirty uh, dirty laundry hanging around and it affects your subconscious. It really does reflect your life, okay? If your room looks like a mess, if your living space, your house, anywhere you live looks like a mess, it does reflect your life. And it does, it actually contributes to what you're receiving in life. So definitely, definitely look up on feng shui and try to see if you could be a little bit more cleaner, okay? Another thing I want people to know is uh, that there's also dowsing. I don't know if you guys have heard of dowsing, but there are certain spots in the world that are affected by the magnetic field from the bottom of the earth that sprouts out. A lot of people get ill because they have a line crossing through their bed or through an area where they usually work and it's been proven that you could get ill by that. So that's something that you might want to check out, which is dowsing and see if you are actually living in a place where you have uh, magnetic uh, frequency crossing over a part of your body and that does have a remedy so you could actually fix that you don't have to actually move okay so this does it guys these are my six ways to cure depression and uh, if you like this video please subscribe please hit the bell notification button and please give it a like and I want to know what what you guys do to cope with depression okay I want you to write down in the comments below how is it that what or what methods do you use to cope with your depression. So yeah, I wanna thank you guys for listening and see you in the next video.